All right, so <clears throat> I guess we could get started. Um, so again, uh, I just want to remind you that homework number one is due on Thursday, okay? So now it's two days from now. And then um, also this week, we are going to do standing wave um, for the lab, all right? So I'll see um, some of you guys this afternoon for the lab, okay? Um, we are still in chapter 16. So um, quickly, let's take a, a brief review on what we learned last time. So last time we check on um, the energy and power of a wave, okay? So basically um, it's going to be proportional to the, the magnitude score and then also proportional to the frequency score, okay? So as the um, um, deviation here shows, it's going to be like, um, dk equal to one half of the mass times a square times omega square, okay? All right, and then for the intensity of the wave, um, if it's coming from a point source, then it um, will propagate um, in a radical um, direction, which is equal to the power at the um, source divided by four pi r squared, where r is the distance from where you um, have the wave to where the initial um, power point the source is, okay? All right, we talk about interference of waves. So if you have, we start with that, if you send a wave in the stream, if the other end of the string is fixed, then when it reflects back, it's actually um, having a phase shift. That means if a peak comes in, then it returns as a valley comes out, okay? Now, on the other hand, if the other end is open, when you send the wave from one end, then, um, it will come back as um, if you send a peak in, then the peak comes back, okay? So then there's no phase shift there. All right. Um, if the media has um, density change um, throughout its body, um, the wave comes in from the thinner part will um, part, partly be transmitted into the thicker media. And then um, there's another part will come in back as reflective wave, okay? So then for reflective wave in this case, if wave propagates from thinner media to thicker media, there's a phase shift, okay? If peak comes in, reflect back as a valley. Now for the transmitted wave, there's no phase shift, okay? Similarly, if you um, have wave come from a thicker part into a thinner part, the transmitted wave doesn't have a phase shift. Um, when in well, while in the reflective wave, there's no phase shift either. Okay, so from thicker to thinner, that's the case there. And if you two waves, if there are two waves in the stream, they meet at a particular location, then the wave um, will add up. Just you just add up their wave function. Okay. Um, for two identical waves, if they meet at the um, same location, the same um, will add up. If peak meets peak, then you have intensity add up. If peak meets valley, then you have um, them cancel out. So then it's called destruct interference. On the previous case, it's construct interference, okay? Um, in general, you have um, two peaks meet when they meet. Um, so they might not be exactly like when they meet, they meet peak to peak or peak to valley, right? So sometimes in general, you might have maybe a peak um, meeting a second wave, which is um, just somewhere in the middle. So in that case, the two wave function, if you look at the two wave function, they have a phase difference of delta, okay? So then you, again, you just simply add the wave, two wave function up y1 plus y2. In this case, um, if the amplitude is the same, then you can do the, um, um, sign at plus sign, okay? So from the trigonometry entity, you can find um, what's the resultant from there. Um, if for the special case, if delta is equal to zero, that means they are in phase, so then you will have construct interference. Um, if the phase difference is 180 degrees or pi, then they will cancel out. That's destruct interference, okay? <clears throat> um, So also, if you look at, um, so in the previous case, you have um, phase difference, original phase difference, right? Now, in this case, if the two waves 
they when they meet at a location when they start with they actually have um, the two wave take after if they take different passes then there's a pass difference um, it will result to a phase difference overall okay so if the two waves come from two sources they are in phase then construction interference happens when the two passes are different by um, zero pi two pi etc so basically integer multiples of lambda wavelengths. If the pass difference is halves of lambdas, then they will have um, destructive interference, okay, of the two. All right, now on the other hand, if the two sources are opposite in phase initially, then um, the conditions are reversed. You have destructive interference when the two passes are differ by zero, pi, two pi, three pi, etc. integer multiple of lambdas. And then um, you will have construct interference if the two passes are different by half of lambdas, okay? All right. And then you talk about also another scenario is if you have um, slightly difference in frequency, then you will have beat um, frequency. Um, where when two, the two waves meet, all right, they kind of add up uh, again, you'll just add the two wave function up. And again, this should be y1 and y2 here on the left hand here as well. So then y total is equal to y1 plus y2. You'll have the two um, trigonometric function add up. Okay, so this is resultant. So from there, the resultant, the amplitude of the wave, resultant wave actually um, changes. A, um, decreases and increases just like a cosine function, all right? In that case, you have uh, here a pitch curve um, beat frequency, which is difference between the two um, frequencies, okay, F1 minus F2, all right? So um, that's what we learned last time. This time we are going to take a look on the standing waves, okay? So in this case, we'll be um, jumping from um, between chapter 16 and 17. All right, so because um, part of 17, chapter 17 talks also about standing wave and then part of um, chapter 16 talks about um, standing waves, okay? So there are two types of standing waves, okay? One is the uh, waves in the stream. So um, many of the uh, musical instrument, you have um, streams, all right, where you can create wave then um, according to um, the frequency you can generate from different, like say, if you have different lengths in streams, for example, for piano cases, the, the lengths of strings are different from uh, different notes, all right? And then for example, guitar strings, um, so they could be made of different thickness, okay? So in that case, you can also generate different tunes or frequencies, all right? And then some other um, musical instruments like pipes, uh, flutes, etc they are um, actually the sound wave um, trapped in a column of air, okay? So those are called um, air tubes. We will talk also about that um, later on. Um, but let's take a, first take a look on the uh, waves being trapped at a stream here, all right? So when you have wave strap, um, um, that's confined in the stream, then we call it a standing wave. So that means um, uh, it's fixed in location, but it oscillates with time. So for example, you can plug um, this string so you can vibrate back and forth. Okay, it will probably produce a tune, all right? Now you can um, give it a different frequency. So you'll, you'll see, in this case, you can uh, vibrate at this pattern. Now you could also vibrate in this pattern, right? So one with the two ends um, confined. So then you can um, generate like kind of two peaks and one value here, okay? So in the lab today uh, or Thursday, what you are going to do is going to generate um, waves in the string here. So in this case, you will see a loop, right? It vibrates back and forth, but um, when you look at it, it will be a loop. And then if it's a wave like this, you'll see three loops. So this part will back 
uh, be moving back and forth. This will be moving back and forth, generate a second loop. And this will be moving back and forth, um, generate a third loop over there. All right. All right. So um, for the part of the string that vibrates most, OK, we call it as, um, or let's start with the, um, the one that actually doesn't move at all. So for the two um, fixed end over here, then they do not um, vibrate because they are fixed, right? So these are called um, nodes, OK? And then for the part that moves the most, the middle here, this part, this point is called anti-node, node, OK? So you could have just one loop here, then the frequency here, you can see um, for a wave like this, this is just half of the wavelength, right? For a complete wave, you should have also, you can extend it back over here. So for a complete wavelength, you should have valley and then a peak, right? So this is half of wavelength. So that means this wave will have um, larger wavelengths than this guy, right? This is a complete um, wavelength over here, which is just equal to the length of the stream here. Now this is one half of the wave equal to the stream. So that means wavelength is twice of the length of stream, okay? So when you have larger um, wavelengths, then the frequency should be smaller because frequency and wavelength, they are inverse proportional to each other, given that the sound waves have the same speed, right? Speed equal to frequency times wavelength, all right? When you plug the stream, they will produce sound wave, okay? So then uh, it's the same here for the speed across but this guy will have uh, smallest um, frequency, and then this guy will have second um, smallest frequency, and then third here. So this is called the first harmonic or fundamental frequency. And then this is called the second harmonic. This is the third harmonic, okay? Higher harmonics, all right? <clears throat> so for a string that, that is having both sides uh, fixed, um, the possible uh, wavelengths and frequencies you can have is first harmonic, second harmonic, um, third harmonic, etc. cetera. So um, then when you have first harmonic, the frequency will be equal to the speed of wave divided by twice of the length, okay? Because wavelength is equal to 2L in this case, all right? For higher harmonics, the frequency are given by this equation, so F, of higher harmonic, M denotes the uh, which order of harmonic it, it is. So equals to N times F1. Okay, if it's second harmonic, then N equal to two. If it's third harmonic, then N equals three. Okay, and then F1 is equal to V divided by two L. So this that case. Okay, wavelength then is equal to fundamental wavelength divided by M, and it's the order of harmonics. Okay, all right. <clears throat> So this is the case when you have the two ends of the streams are being fixed, okay? And this figure um, summarize um, the different like from um, when n is equal to from n equal to one to five, okay? So the equations um, for the frequency for each harmonic and then the, also the uh, wavelengths for each one, okay? Um, there's this um, video, um, short video I want to share with you guys. So let me um, just stop sharing over here and then see if I can bring this up. Sharing here. So this is about um, the standing wave, um, the physics concept of standing wave, and then um, that that is in um, musical instruments. Okay. Sound 
is a wave created by a vibrating object that is transported through a medium like air. When produced as music, vibrations have rhythm. Though not necessarily able to hear audible sound, the deaf and hearing impaired Dr. Howe, we can't see the video. Music. When a cello string is played, a stand... You cannot see the video? No, we just see your emails. Like your email oh, list. I'm sorry, I think I shared the, the wrong uh, screen. Let me do that again. Ah, yeah, it's the screen. All right, thanks for pointing that out. Sound is a wave created by a vibrating object that is transported through a medium like air. When produced as music, vibrations have rhythm. Though not necessarily able to hear audible sound, the deaf and hearing impaired can feel vibrations and enjoy music. When a cello string is played, a standing wave pattern is formed by the vibrations. The resulting frequencies are known as harmonics, which can be changed by varying the tension, the string length, or the linear density by shifting to a string with a different thickness. The lowest frequency, or fundamental frequency, occurs when the string length equals one half wavelength. The second harmonic is produced by holding the string down in the middle. The length of the string equals one wavelength. The third harmonic is produced by compressing the string such that the length of the string equals one and a half wavelengths. For all musical instruments, the harmonic frequencies are related to each other by whole number ratios. There is a fundamental relationship between wave speed, frequency, and wavelength. Musical compositions produce a sound wave with a mixture of harmonics. Because of these amazing physics principles, anyone can express themselves through music. All right. I hope that gets, um, gave you a better understanding of um, how the different um, frequencies can be generated from um, some musical instrument. All right. So we'll take a look on um, this example here. So um, it says a string of 2.5 meters long with a mass of 3.6 gram is stretched between two fixed points with a tension of 91 newtons. Find the frequency of the fundamental on um, this string. Okay, so you're looking for fundamental frequency over here. Um, so this is a combined uh, concept of the uh, standing wave and then what we learned from the previous um, lecture that uh, given the tension here, all right, and then um, um, so in this case, you can find the speed, okay? Because tension is given, the length is given, the mass is given. So you can find the, um, the speed of the wave here. And then um, you can use the speed of wave to calculate the um, um, frequency, fundamental frequency as from one of the equations above here. So you are doing speed divided by two times of the lambda of the L, okay? And then speed is equal to from the previous uh, class, actually a couple of class back, um, equal to square root of F divided by mass per unit length, okay? So I'm going to have you guys try that and then we can take a look on the solution together.
All right, so I think I see a few responses in there. Um, we can take a look here, all right? Um, I think I, um, I saw some correct answers. I saw a couple answers that um, don't look right, but I think I have a sense of what uh, was wrong, okay? So let's take a look here together. So first you want to calculate what's the speed of the wave in the string. So that's equal to, um, so V equals to F, F is given as 91 Newtons divided by, uh, for mu here should be mass divided by the length, okay? So um, mass is given as 3.6 grams, all right? Um, so then you want to multiply by 10 to the negative three to convert into kilograms, okay? And this divided by, in the numerator, is divided by the length of the um, string, 2.5 meters here, okay? And then take square root there. So this should give you 251 meters, okay? I think this is where um, you guys didn't get it right, um, didn't convert into kilogram here, all right? Um, so once you have that, then frequency, fundamental frequency is just V divided by 2L, okay? So 251, this should be meters per second. Meters per second divided by two times 2.5 meters, okay? That will give you roughly 50 hertz, okay? All right, so if you get about 50 hertz, you are right. If you get about 1.69, then you probably didn't convert the um, grams to kilogram right, okay? Um, let me know if you have um, questions about this one. All right. So if you guys are clear, and then we can move on here. So this is um, pretty much what you are going to do for this week's lab, okay? Um, kind of same idea here, not exactly the same setup you will get. You will get a, a sine wave generator, which um, doesn't look like the figure here, but um, pretty close, okay? It's, um, we have a simpler, um, more recent version than this old fashioned one. And then you are going to connect the, um, sine uh, function generator, the output to the input of the, we have a vibrator, we call vibrator, again, as we have a small um, version of this, um, the input of that. So sine wave goes in here, then this guy will go up and down, up and down, just generating a sine wave, okay? We will actually um, tie one end of the string to this vibrator, and then the other end, um, um, will be uh, strapped through here, this pulley here, which is fixed on there. Um, so then um, this end, this is fixed. And then the, the stream is fixed at the pulley location here because at the location of the pulley here, it doesn't move. So you'll be looking at the um, wave generated in the stream here, okay? Now, depending on how many, uh, what's the, how many like different uh, pieces of wave you add on here to change the, mass here. So then the tension in the string is being determined by the weight here for the um, mass masses you put on the, uh, the hook here, on the hanger here. All right, so then you have tension, you have the length of the stream, and you can determine how many loops you have here um, in the stream here. So you can calculate what's the frequency, etc. Okay, that's what you are going to do for this week's lab, okay? Um, now, that's the scenario when you have two ends of the string are fixed, okay? Now, another scenario with stream is if you have just one end of the stream, it's fixed, but the other end is open, okay? So this is um, what happens. So when that happens, now, because this end is open, right? So you can move up and down, up and down, all right? So this end is fixed. So then, this can be one of the configuration for the possible wave you have, okay? So this end is not going to be at the um, stationary point. It will go up and down. So then this is your first um, frequency you would have or the highest um, wavelength you could have, okay? So lambda equal to 4L in this case. Um, in that case, if string is one end is fixed, the other end is open, then you will have, um, harmonics which are 
um, odd numbers, okay, one, three, five, seven, nine, etc. So the first frequency um, then is again called fundamental frequency, which should be equal to this guy here. All right, so V divided by 4L. And then the first wavelength is 4L. The wavelength will decrease, the frequency will increase, okay? So they are listed here, equations are summarized here. Okay. <clears throat> now, on the other hand, you might have like air columns. So for example, um, in the figure shows here, um, you, if you have the same bottles, you can fill the bottles um, with water, uh, for example, um, to different levels. So then the air columns um, having different lengths, okay? So um, you guys can do this at home um, pretty easy. So you can blow um, the opening end of the column, you'll see different tunes will be produced according to the different lengths of air columns um, in, the, in the bottle, okay? And this is the, Basically, the same mechanisms if you have uh, pipes, organ pipes, or flutes, etc., for musical instruments. Okay, um, something like um, these ones. Okay. All right. So this is all we, what you have. Okay. So uh, we can take a look at um, one end is open and then the other end is closed. So then the air inside the um, column here will vibrate. Okay. Now at the end that is um, closed, then you will have minimum here. At the end it's open, you will have maximum, okay? So then this is the first uh, possible wave you can have for the air column here. So this is very similar to the string when you have one end open, the other end uh, fixed, okay? So the exactly the same there. The second harmonic you could possibly have is this guy, this configuration. So in this case, N is equal to three. And then the third one here, n is equal to five. Okay, so the possible frequencies and wavelengths are listed um, at the bottom of the slide here, with the first one, first fundamental frequency as v divided by four times l as the length of the column. Okay, and for another scenario, um, sometimes you have uh, columns with both n are open. So then, uh, at the open ends, you will have maximum for the vibration of the median. And then um, you have like maximum on both ends. So in the middle, you will have um, the minimum vibration of the air. Okay, so this is then it's the first harmonic. All right, and then this will be the second harmonic. Now this is um, one wavelength. So this is half wavelength because this is one quarter wavelength plus one quarter, so one half. This is um, half plus one quarter plus one quarter that gives you one. Okay, so first, second, third, with their um, possible wavelengths and um, frequencies are listed at the last two lines on the slide here. All right. Now, um, let me just point out before I move on, um, another scenario you might be considering. Okay, so um, for on my paper here, for the scenario, if you have both ends are closed, okay? So then at the close end, you will have min minimum vibration. Let me stop sharing, you might be seeing larger, right? And then in the middle, you'll have maximum. So you will have something like this. So then this is like one half wavelength, okay? The second configuration you could have is, at the ends, you'll have minimum, all right, and then something like this. Um, maybe not exactly according to scale. You can imagine, no, something like this, sorry. All right, and then um, higher harmonics. Okay, so for both ends are closed, um, the possible um, scenario you have is similar to with both ends are open, okay? So you'll have, this is um, the wavelength, fundamental wavelength will be 2L, frequency will be V divided by 2L, okay? And then the second one will be equal to L, F1 will be 2V divided by 2L, basically, okay? So then first harmonic, second harmonic, higher harmonic, et cetera, okay? So if you have both ends are open, then it's the same scenario if, if you have both ends are closed for the air column.
All right. Um, let's take a look on this example here. So it says an organ pipe opens at both ends, has a harmonic with a frequency of 440 hertz. The next higher harmonic um, in the pipe has a frequency of 495 hertz. Find the fundamental frequency and the length of the pipe. Assuming that speed of the sound is 340, All right? So I'll give you guys a, a few minutes to work on this and then we can take a look on the solution together. Uh, maybe to you, give you guys some uh, hint here. So it tells you two frequency, right? But it didn't tell you which uh, harmonic this is. So you can assume this is the, um, say a particular uh, harmonic, say nth harmonic, okay? So then you would have um, F sub N equals to 440 Hertz, all right? And then F of N plus one, which is the next harmonic should be 495 Hertz, okay? With both ends are open, we know that Fn is equal to n times F1, right? So then you are starting with m times F1 equals to 440 Hertz. And then this guy should be equal to m plus one. times F1, right, equals to 495 Hertz, okay? So you are given two equations then with two unknowns as N and F1, you are looking for those two unknown, or actually the F1, and then once you find F1, you should be able to find length, okay? because F1 is equal to, given the F1 is equal to V divided by 2L, okay? V is 340, then you can solve for your L, okay?
All right, I think I see um, a few responses in here. We can take a look at the solution together, okay? Um, so as I mentioned, um, you can give in like two frequencies, you can write up like this, right? So this is n's harmonic is the frequencies equal to m times of fundamental F1. That's equal to 440. And then this is the next harmonic. You just um, you can say m plus one, all right, times the fundamental is four hundred ninety five hertz. Okay, so then um, you are looking for f one, right? And then the length of the the tube, the pipe. So um, by looking at two equations. Um, and then with two unknowns, you guys should be able to solve both unknowns, okay? So uh, you may have different techniques, um, but what I can do here is I can take a look on the second equation. So this then can be rewritten as n times f1 plus f1, right? Because n, um, you can distribute the f1 into the parentheses. So n f1 plus f1, all right, equals to 495 hertz, all right? Now, and F1 is 440, so then this guy's 440 hertz, right? So then 440 plus F1 is 495, so you can solve for F1 to be 55 hertz, right? So then that gives you F1 to be 55 hertz, okay? If you got 55 hertz, then you are right. Now, this is A for A. Now you'll be solving for um, L here. So F1, so 55 Hertz is equal to, the V would be 340 meters per second divided by two times L, okay? So then L equals to 340 divided by two times 55, okay? Basically um, kind of doing like multi, um, cross multiplication. So multiply both or like move this guy over here and then move this guy down there, okay? So that will give you um, 3.09 meters, okay? For the length of the pipe, okay? So this is for B, all right? So if you get about 3.1 or 3.09, then you are right as well, okay? So um, I see the responses you guys got are um, all correct, okay? So that's good. Let me know if you have questions on this. All right, so if you guys are clear, um, I'm going to stop here for the lecture. We have uh, about um, 14 minutes left here. Um, if you have questions about any of your uh, homework problems, you can stay here and ask me about that. But if not, you are free to leave. All right. I don't have any questions, but thank you very much. I appreciate it. All right, sure. Okay. See you then. Have a great day. Bye. You too.